So on the shifter on the NV3500, uh, when we took this out, we broke the housing. But I mean, it's not a big deal because we just can. You see where it's cracked. Just put bigger washers on there, and it'll be fine. But they give you these flimsy, like M6 M M6 fasteners that are only about an inch long, and they barely go into the case. You know, look how long this is. They expect that much clamping force to hold the shifter in place. If you're going to put a little bit of abuse into this transmission, you might want to go with a longer bolt. I'm going with a quarter twenty, one and a quarter long. I'm going to tap it out. Just a small little tidbit. Pay attention to. Here's a speed sensor. It's got a magnet on the end here. It's all covered in like metal shavings. And careful of the O-ring. Let's see, look at all the this thing had some this thing had some issues. Let's put that in a box over here. I'm going to pry out the tail shaft seal. In all actuality, it shouldn't take much because it's a rubber seal. Careful not to destroy the housing. I removed this pin here for the shifter, one of the shifter forks, and you can see I still have to remove this pin. So once I get this pin out using a drift and a hammer, you can just, you can remove your shift rail shaft through the top, and then pull all your forks and components out. I'm putting them all in a nice clean bucket. I'm going to have to wash these all in kerosene or solvent anyways because this transmission is contaminated. Well, as luck would have it, I found my good punch. I was able to knock, knock, knock off that drift pin. See it's sitting in the bottom there. So, let's see if I can do this one-handed. See so if I can push the rail through. Mind you, the kit comes with new pins. Oh, come on now. Wiggle, wiggle, pull. Still kind of warm. I did put a lot of heat on it. Rather carefully. Mind you, I'm one-handed right now, so forgive my shakiness. shift rail. Put that here in a clean five gallon bucket. Let's see, maybe I can put this down now. Well, so in moving it, this one a little it's for the slide for the 
gear, se gear, uh, gear selector into the bucket. Uh, one of the shift forks for the front here. Yeah, you got to pay attention as you're tearing apart. Look for excessive wear. Excessive wear, you know, it'll cause clatter. It'll cause issues. Is this aluminum or is this plastic? It's aluminum, but it looks like plastic or nylon or something. This is the whole reason why you need to put this together on a jig. Let's see. I don't take that apart just yet. Okay, so I think this is still held in here by some fasteners. To access these bolts on the sides here, they're kind of inside the case. Put some heat on them first, warm up the aluminum, and then you're going to have to get a cylinder socket, universal joint, and the ratchet on it to remove them. Then you got one on the other side you got to remove too. The whole gear train has to come out as one assembly, not individually. Making these transmissions fairly difficult to rebuild and uh, I will build a jig for it, as I mentioned in my other video, for the ease of reassembly. So this is going to look kind of funny, uh, so don't judge. Here's your reverse idler, and everything's just about to fall out of the case. A lot of times with higher mileage units, like these, you're going to have to take a block of wood and a one or two pound sledge and gently tap on the input shaft. And now. I believe the four-wheel drive units have a snap ring somewhere in the tail shaft area, you know, keeping the output shaft, you know, locked in place. I could be wrong. Guys who've built these before chime in. But this one did not seem to have one. Uh, you can have everything torn apart. You can have all your side retaining bolts removed. And you're discouraged because you can't get your gear train out. It's because you know, gunk and contamination and wear. Uh, the uh, input output shafts tend to get stuck in the bearings or in the seals or whatnot. So gently tap, tap, tug, shimmy and shake. Just do it every, you know, every uh, tap or two. Go in there to make sure your shift forks aren't hanging up so you don't bust anything. Uh, so I'm at the point now where. I can basically remove the gear train. Yes, I know it's going to be in pieces, it's going to be like a puzzle, and that's kind of like how I like it, so I can figure out how to put it back together. Alright, so here we go. The reverse idler, the thing that's notorious for not being able to get back into the transmission without having it on a jig. Inspect your parts. You're going to notice you have two areas here that uh, locking collars kind of like hold it in place to the transmission case goes into the bucket I'm try to do this without all the shit on my feet cluster I think they call this the cluster gear I could be wrong Teeth look in a great shape. I believe the transmission had 200k on it. Doesn't smell burned. Got a retention plate. Remember the bolts I was telling you about. Sorry, I can't see the monitor, so I can't tell if I'm giving you guys an accurate description. One, two, three bolts here. This retention plate. Keeps the whole gear train locked into the case. Into the bucket. The case is kind of filthy in itself. Here's the pocket for the reverse idler. This case is going to need a bath. It's going to need bearings changed. There's contamination in the bearings. 
seems to be, it's almost like clutch material, synchro material, I don't know. And of course the main gear train itself. I'm going to have to build the jig for this. Output shaft, your reluctor wheel for your speedometer sensor, output shaft bearing, which I'm going to change, your synchros. So, for the time being, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to disturb anything until I build that jig. And then your shift forks, always inspect for wear. And these things are showing some wear. All in all, this assembly was not that bad. Um, I'm going to order the rebuild kit, and I'm going to make a jig out of wood. I probably could just use the bench and just drill a couple holes, but from what I understand, the jig's got to be mobile. you got to be able to spin it over. Um, but, again, from what can, I can tell, all the gears are in great shape. It just, it's going to need bearing synchros and seals, and then it'll be put back into service. It'll be a good unit.